Today Jesus weeps over Jerusalem because they did not recognize the time of their visitation, their time of heaven entering earth, of the kingdom of God coming to them. And I wonder, do we recognize our time of visitation from the presence of God? Hey, welcome to Bible Time, everybody. Thanks for joining me today. Hey, I don't typically speak about current events as in what's happening today or this week because I don't know when you'll be joining me. But I'm just thinking about this question from yesterday's reading. What are you doing with the investment that God made in you? And uh, for me today, today was the day of Robbie Zacharias's memorial. Um, and I was able to join that online today. And he was just such a hero of mine. Uh, such an interesting world we live in. He was somebody that discipled me and we never met. And um, I think I probably spent more time with Ravi <laughs> listening to his messages than most, pro I, maybe than anybody else. Um, what an amazing gift to this generation in apologetics and his witness and all that. And again, I don't typically talk about, uh, you know, what's going on, but this is something I experienced today. Uh, I'm sure for years to come, you'll be able to look back and, and find those recordings. But, you know, he's a voice that will live on. And, and his videos and, and messages online are most definitely worth your time. But I really wanted to mention that because he's a person that I think with all that he could do, embraced the gifting and the investment that God made in him. Uh, he speaks of saving his life on the the bed, the bed of suicide where he tried to take his own his own life and he um, he met Jesus by reading the verse because I live you also shall live. And then he gave his life, I think 50 years or more to the sake of the gospel and helping people answer rationally the question of why God is real and why Jesus is the Savior. And so I just thought I'd mention that because it tied in with this question yesterday. And it again has reinvigorated in me this desire to run the race well that God has laid out for me. And so I hope the same is true for you. So I just wanted to say that. And thanks for bearing with me here that's not typically the point um, of these videos to share testimony or, or my thoughts it's uh, but I just felt like that was something I wanted to share today but we are here to read the Bible and uh, to have the Word of God feed us and so thanks for bearing with me we are picking up here in gosh where are we I think we're in 19 so I always forget 19 verse 28 and when he had said these things he went on ahead going up to Jerusalem when he drew near to Bethpage and Bethany at the mount called Olivet or the Mount of Olives he sent two of his disciples saying go into the village in front of you where on entering you will find a colt tied on which no one has ever sat which is interesting no one's ever sat, but this would be to fulfill a prophecy. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it? You shall say this, the Lord has need of it. So those who were sent went away and found it just as he had told them. And as they were untying the colt, its owners said to them, why are you untying the colt? <laughs> like in other words, uh, you're stealing my colt. And they said, the Lord has need of it. Period. That's it. That's that's all it took, I guess. It, hey, why are you stealing my colt? Well, the Lord needs it. Not something that you could pull off anytime you want to steal something, but the Lord had, um, you know, set all of this up. And they brought it to Jesus, and throwing their cloaks on the colt, they set Jesus on it. 
And as he rode along, they spread their cloaks on the road. And as, uh, as he was drawing near, already on the way down the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of his disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. So we see a multitude specifically of disciples rejoicing and praising God. Why? Because of the mighty works. And then they were saying this, Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. The name of the Lord continues to be of importance. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. He answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the very stones would cry out. And we get this great line from Jesus that if, if human beings are silent in regards to the proclamation of his identity and his praise and his glory, even the rocks would cry out. We must lift our voices and give honor to where honor is due. We must proclaim the name of the Lord. We must proclaim Jesus as King. We must give him glory. And when he drew near and saw the city, he wept over it, saying, Would that you, even you, had known on this day the things that would make for peace. But now they are hidden from your eyes. For the days will come upon you when your enemies will set up a barricade around you and surround you and hem you in on every side and tear you down to the ground, you and your children within you, and they will not leave one stone upon another in you because you did not know the time of your visitation. Such a lament. It's not the first time we see Jesus weep or God has emotions too. He's driven by spirit, but experiences emotions. And uh, you know, this is a this is a prophetic word, which is indeed going to come to pass as Jerusalem was torn down, I think, in the year 70 AD. But what really is interesting to me is this last line. Because you did not know the time of your visitation. Not a word that we use very often, visitation. But I think it's referring to just the reality that Jesus is present. That he, he came in this season, in this time. That the Messiah was here. The one that thousands upon thousands of people had been looking toward year after year. Looking for him, looking for him. And he was here. Heaven had visited earth. And they didn't recognize him. They didn't receive him. And it just makes me wonder, are there times that I miss it? Are there times that, that the visitation of the Holy Spirit is, is here? Maybe in a church service or at a conference, but maybe more than just those specific situations, in, in a season, in a, in a time, in a people, in a city, is there a visitation from heaven that, that God is actually doing right now that we won't experience unless we recognize its presence? I think that it's true. I think that in, in all times since the Holy Spirit came that there's a reality of visitation from the presence of God that people have, have recognized and embraced and that some people have completely ignored and even now in this generation, more and more, um, people are trying to deny the reality of God's existence at all. And it's, it's heartbreaking. It's just heartbreaking to me to think, how could we really convince ourselves that all of this is just here, out of nothing? 
Jesus brings heaven to earth. This is the time of our visitation and the world that is fighting to argue that he doesn't exist. They don't even know it, but they need to know that he is real and he is for them and he loves them. And their visitation from heaven just might need to come through us. Because Jesus visited earth in the flesh in this time, but when he sent his Holy Spirit, he declared, the way that I'm going to visit earth from now on is through my people, the temple that I live in. And so I guess to me, there's two takeaways. It's do I recognize the visitation of the Lord and the presence of the Holy Spirit right now in my life? And number two, am I being the visitation of the presence of God through sharing his spirit living inside of me to the people around me? I think for today, I just feel encouraged that we should just spend a little bit of time dwelling on that thought, praying on that thought. Allowing the Holy Spirit to minister to us and to change us as we ask the question, how am I being a physical expression of the Holy Spirit to the world that I live in, the friend group that I have, the workplace that I'm placed in, the family that God's given me. How am I letting the Holy Spirit visit people through my life? And so please don't tune out. Would you give at least just these few moments to consider that, to spend some time in prayer and to ask the Holy Spirit to reveal to you how you are or are not or what he would like you to do or stop doing or to just empower you to represent him well. Not out of condemnation, not out of legalism, but out of life. And so let's spend a few minutes in prayer together separately and uh, see what the Holy Spirit might do in us today.